what the Lord did and what the Lord showed me is what the message is about. The accident happened August 11th. I was going down the road. I ran off the road. I overcorrected my truck, and the trailer had refrigerators and all on it, and it, the lady behind me saw it, so I, I got a witness to it. The trailer just took the truck, went 90 degrees straight left. When I turned, when the truck turned, I saw where I was going, and I was going around 50 miles an hour. It's way too late to slam on brakes. There wasn't nowhere to turn the steering wheel because it was a solid embankment that I was going to hit. And honestly, church, I mean, just, I was ready to die. I really, literally, just closed my eyes and I said, Jesus. That's all I said. Just said, Jesus, and I closed my eyes. I hit real hard, um, threw me around the truck, I wasn't wearing a seatbelt like, like an ignorant person that I have been for years. It bounced me all over the truck. I, I had to black out a while because when I came to, I didn't remember at the time a lot of what happened in the cab. Uh, I looked up and I heard a lady's voice saying, Sir, are you alive? Are you okay? And I answered her back, yes, ma'am, I think I am. My leg was killing me. I thought it was broke, maybe in multiple places. My shoulder was hurting real bad. My head, everything was. But anyway, um, but I wasn't bleeding profusely nowhere. Uh, there wasn't no emergency to get me out and right then. The truck landed on its side on top of the utility trailer. Now, I don't how that happened. I reckon the impact from the bankment just stopped the truck in its tracks and the trailer went up under it. Um, and it was teetering. When they first got there, they had to run cables to keep it from flipping over again because I was, I was sitting with my right leg across the console, my left leg by the steering wheel, and my head and my back was against the driver's door and window. So what they had to do, they had to stabilize the truck first, and then they couldn't get me out without cutting me out. So they had to get chainsaws and sledgehammers and stuff or whatever and come do that. And that took about the, people said it took 45 minutes. I don't know, I, I believe that. But here's what I want to preach on. I heard all my life, all my life I've heard this, that when you're ready to die and you're facing death, and I'm not, now I'm not taking a, it don't merely matter, well, I've been there. Yeah, I've been in wrecks, church. I've been in wrecks. I've been in bad wrecks. This was a horrendous wreck. This was a wreck that the state trooper said people don't walk out of. And I was facing that embankment, and I thought I was going to die. And your mind, your mind thinks about
Jesus is proud and said, I am. All of a sudden, those things, things that seem so important, don't really mean nothing. And all of a sudden, those negatives and positives or whatever you've been thinking about, they don't mean nothing. Nothing. Just what does Jesus want me to do now? And you know, I sat there the next day, I was in the hospital, and my phone was still in my truck, and so I, I didn't have no phone to talk on, to read my Bible on. I didn't have my reading glasses. I didn't have my Bible. Didn't have none of my books. So Wednesday all day, because I was flat on my back, they wouldn't let me move. They put this thing in between my legs, and they wouldn't let me move because the three things with me, of course, is, is the hip was completely out of joint. They put it back in. I've got to treat it like recovering from a hip replacement. I've got a broken bone on my back, and they won't rest on it. And that's why I'm in the reclining chair. This is the only position that that, that bone and my spine gets rest. Then my shoulder's torn up and everything, you know. So I was laying there all day Wednesday. Couldn't read my Bible, couldn't talk to them on the phone, couldn't, you know, uh, didn't, didn't want to watch TV. I never even cut TV on. But I thought all day about that question. Okay. Okay, son. I saved you. Okay, son. I gave you another opportunity. Mm -hmm. Now, what are you going to do with it? And that's all that's been on my heart, Brother John. You know, me and you talked Wednesday. He, he took me to an orthopedic surgeon Wednesday and spent the, a few hours with me Wednesday. And they're going to have to go back to an MRI. My rotor cuff is badly torn. I can't use my right hand at all. And I have to take my left hand and do that to be able to use it. I can't, I can't raise it up or nothing. But all that's all I thought about, church. It's all I thought about, Miss Gail. And what do we do now? What do I do now? And then, I, then, then the Lord gave me some verses in the Bible that I want to read. Brother Tony, if you will, I don't, uh, come get my verses. Tell what I'd like you to do. Call them out. Uh, I don't want to just, just I, I, hand it to them. Let me, hand it not my Bible. I'm going to have them read my Bible. I want you to put the verses. Brother Tony, are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, sir. I want you to put Proverbs 5.21 on the, on the screen. Proverbs 5.21. I'm on my neck. I can't see this thing. Proverbs 5.21. The way I can, somebody read, I can't take my head around. For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his going. Pondereth. Did you see that? The Lord pondereth. Now give me Proverbs 21, verse 2. Proverbs 21, verse 2. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. But the Lord pondereth the heart. Pondereth. The Lord pondereth. Okay, give me Proverbs 24, 12. If thou sayest the whole, we do it not. Doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? Does not he that pondereth? Look at me, church. I ain't being dramatic. This sermon could change your life. This sermon could change this church. If you'll give me about 15 minutes and forget your telephone and forget the afternoon and forget everything else, I believe Jesus gave me a special message to give to you. 
You know what ponder me? How many of you old timers, some of us old timers, how many of y'all remember the old timers using the word? I think I'll ponder about that a while. You ever heard that word before? Sure we have. Well, let me ponder on that a while, son. You know what? Son, that'll take a little pondering. So I looked the word up, Brother Nathan. <coughs> and the word pondering means, now get this definition. It means seeing and getting all the facts and all the circumstances to a place you can reason and weigh them and make the right decision. Are you looking at me? Please don't be distracted, church. Give me 15 minutes. Give me 15 minutes. I'm asking for that. Ponder to get things in your mind and your heart and the facts and the figures and, and, and the truth and then be able like you like you do a scale brother Shannon you know where you weigh a scale and you, you weigh in a balance it says to be able to do that and then make right decisions let me tell you why your life's in a mess church let me tell you why my life's in a mess church because we make bad decisions Somebody say amen. But John, you at least say amen. We get our lives in a mess because we make bad decisions. And we make bad decisions not because we're bad people. I don't believe we're bad people. Not because we don't mean well. I believe we mean well. We just don't ponder. See, see church... See, church, we got to have noise everywhere. Have you noticed that? What did the old timers say? I've got to ponder that. You know how many times I've watched my papa walk out on the porch and sit in the rocking chair and just talk to nobody and answer no telephone and just rock in a rocking chair on the front porch for hours sometimes and just watch the birds and the cars drive by and all that. We don't do that. Do you hear me? We don't do that. We got to have something playing. We got to have something talking to us. We got to have something. No. What we need is quietness. And still, what we need is to give God the Holy Ghost and the Word of God a chance to speak to our hearts. Years ago, Of the Paul Chapel, and, and I, he, he set it up where I could spend the whole afternoon with him and, and what he does. And, and in the middle of the afternoon, every day of his life, he walks by his secretary, her name's Bonnie Furso. He says, Bonnie, it's my time. And he goes in his office and he closes the door. And for 30 minutes, you say, well, I could do that if I wasn't busy. Uh, I don't want to make you mad. He probably does more in one day than most of you do in a whole week. I'm not exaggerating. You have no idea. Look at me. You have no idea what this man does. This man, I asked Brother Fisher, we was talking about preachers and their natural ability and all, and how sharp they are. I said, what is Paul Chapel on a 0 to 10? He said, a 25. He took a church of 20 people 30 years ago, and they run 7,000 now. He's got a Bible college. He's got six schools. He's got four websites full time. I'm talking about one of the busiest men you ever know in your life. But 30 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, he goes in his office, he sits down, he has a paper and a pencil, he has no phone, and it don't matter, they know, it don't matter. He said 23 half an hour a day, my friend, my, my, my family, 
can reach me but this 30 minutes. They can't nobody reach me. And that it's life or death. And it's because I need time to ponder. I need time for the Word of God that I read yesterday and the sermon I heard and the song I sang. I need time. I don't need noise. We're a noise society. You can't eat a meal without it. You can't be in the house without it. We've got to have noise. Well, I believe Satan is a master of that, Brother Morris. He's a distractor. See, when I was in that truck, y'all, and we're about halfway through cutting me out, there wasn't nothing I could do. Didn't have no cell phone. Had no idea where it was. I thought it might have been up in the trees somewhere. I couldn't talk to nobody except to answer the men when they'd say, Are you okay? And I'd say, Yes, sir, I'm okay. And they told me, Don't move your leg, it's probably broke. Don't move your leg, don't move your back, don't move nothing. Stay where you are. But you know what I had? I had 25 minutes of the best time with Jesus I've ever had. Does that make sense, Brother Ron? Huh? It was 20. <laughs> it was 25 minutes. It was just me and him. And I was so full of thankfulness of what he had just done for me. And I was sitting there just saying, Lord, what do you want me to learn out of this? What do you want me to do out of this? And for those 25 minutes, he finally had Ed Strickland's attention. I didn't have YouTube on. Didn't have a radio on. Didn't have a television on. Didn't have a telephone with me. Didn't have nobody talking to me. It was just Jesus and Ed. And it was 25 wonderful minutes. Church, we got to ponder. We got to give him time to speak to our hearts. We got to cut the radio, the television off, the telephone off. We got to cut the noise off. We got to let the Holy Spirit of God speak to our hearts. Now, let me tell you what he told me. He told me. I'm not just not through with you. We're fixing to really do some things. Amen. Did you hear that? And, and I, I'm just telling you up front, if you got negativity, you're probably coming to the wrong man right now. Sir. Well, you know, we ain't got this. I know that we got Jesus. Hey, and I'm alive. <laughs> and I'm breathing God's air. Amen. And, and I got a chance to preach and teach and witness and talk to people and pray. Ooh, hallelujah, son. Jesus told me we're going we're to get some things done. We're gonna, I, I believe that. I mean, he didn't give me another opportunity to just get a little more money in my savings account. I don't give a flip about my savings account. I don't give a flip right now about my vehicles I have or don't have. I don't really care about my home right now or whatever. They don't, none of that matter. Because when you're sitting there facing death, that all leaves. Do you hear me? It's all so temporary. And it's all so unimportant. And you know, I just said, Lord, I told him, I said, Lord, I got in the hospital in my brother's house because my wife couldn't handle me. I mean, physically, you know, this, I'm not going to sympathy. You know how bad I was hurting last weekend? Last Saturday and Sunday, I hurt all day, all over my body, my back, my shoulder, my neck. I had whiplash. I said I had a whiplash in my neck, my, my vertebrae and all were, were a little loose. And, and I had, I had cramping between my shoulder blades. I had cramping in my back, cramping in my legs where my hip was torn out and joint is put back together. I hurt last weekend so All day, Saturday and Sunday. 
Then a lady called me Sunday night. Y'all may think I'm crazy. She called me and was talking. She called me about appliances. I got to talk to her. And she said, and I told her about the wreck I was in. And she said, Pastor, would you mind my prayer group praying for you? I said, I wish you would. Because I was hurting so bad, Brother Shannon. I really, I wasn't even telling my brother and some people. I was sitting there last Sunday at a party for Stephanie. And my back was just throbbing. And it was hurting. And I, I just couldn't get comfortable. And I told her, I said, I wish you would. She said, well, there's three of us. And we pray three times a day, Pastor. And she sent me a verse out of the Bible. Uh, Jeremiah 30. Verse 17, give us that, Vic, if you will. Jeremiah 30, verse 17. She sent this verse to me. Claim that verse, Pastor. Claim it right now. And as she sent that verse to me, somebody read it to me. I can't turn my head around. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee thy wounds, and I will call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, no man seeketh after well, that's the one she quoted to me and gave to me. And I started quoting it every few hours. And they started praying. I know, and, I know, and I know a lot of you were praying. And everybody's prayers started getting through. And Monday and Tuesday, I got a little better and a little better. It's been a long road. Got a long, I, I got a long ways to go. But here's what I wanted to get across to you. I got in my car finally Wednesday night. I didn't think I could drive it because I can't do nothing unless I'm leaning back, but I can tilt that stairwell back on that Park Avenue and tilt the seat back. I mean, I can't see above the stairwell hardly because I'm riding down the road like, you know. But I was driving around. I was driving around Friday. Friday. I was driving through the parking lot over there, Epps Bridge, whatever you call them stores. And God overwhelmed me, just overwhelmed me with the thought that, you know, look at you. Look at you. Look what I did for you. Now, are you going to use it or are you going to waste it? It just got real intense for a while. Church, look at me. Some of you, a lot of you, a lot of us have lost our intensity. We've lost it for a while. We're not doing what we used to do. We're not coming to church as faithful as we used to come. We're, we're missing more church services. We're not coming to prayer meetings. We're not passing out tracts. We're not witnessing to people. I witnessed yesterday, I went to Eddie's store, and by the way, if you see my car at his store, I'm not working, trust me, I can't. But I can sit in that reclining chair, and customers come in and out, and before they leave, I got Miss Mary running them by me. I said, run them by me on their way out. And I give them a track, and I invite them to church, and I witness to them. I'm going to go down to Jimmy's when I feel like it. I can't sit on a hard bench right now. But I done talked to him about going down there, sitting on picnic bench in the mornings when it's cooler, passing out tracts and witnessing. I remember a lot of you how faithful you used to be, how dedicated we used to be. I remember how excited we used to be. Hey, church, listen to me. God didn't just give me another chance. He gave you another chance. That's the way I look at it. He gave us all another chance, Brother Greg. God said, hey, I mean, I can tell you now, bless God, you can say what you want to, but I can tell you, they've been, some people have been pronouncing us dead for a while, and they're going to throw the dirt on us, you know. I mean, an amazing thing about where I hit that embankment, guess what's right on the other side of it? A cemetery. I mean, the embankment's here, the highway's here, and the cemetery's right there. 
I could have been in that cemetery. But I'm not. I, I want to read you one last verse. One last verse. Uh, 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 Proverbs 4, 26. This is the one that just, this is the one that the Lord just has buried in my heart. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to memorize it today. I, didn't, I started to yesterday and didn't. Somebody read it to me, Tony. Did you see that? Hey, hey, can I ask you a question, church? I didn't ask you. If God has to ponder, are you listening to me? I said if God has to ponder, shouldn't we ponder? You remember the first three verses I read to you was God was doing the pondering. God! Bible said God pondereth the heart of man. God pondereth. I mean, God ponders. Brother Mike, God gets quiet. God lets it get quiet around him. And God ponders and then makes decisions. But this verse here, read it again, Brother Tony. How many of y'all would like to make, look at me, church. How many of y'all would like to make right decisions? You got to get your pride and your selfish wants out of the way. I'm telling you, you do. When I was sitting in the front of that truck, he pretty naked before God right there. I couldn't do nothing for myself. Nothing. Doctor walked in Wednesday morning. He said, Eddie had showed him the pictures of the truck. I'm telling you, the pictures don't even do it justice. Really don't. He looked at the pictures and he said, I don't know, I don't know who you are a whole lot. I've never met you before. But I believe God has something else for you. It's just going to take me a while to get physically back, you know. But I'm back. Amen. I'm back. And I want us to be back. I want this church to be back. The Lord wants us back. Some of you, listen to me. Some of you got to get to where you were. You remember the days when you were more dedicated, more committed. You remember the days when you were more active, when you participated more. You remember the day, I mean, we've talked about it, prayer meetings, but we're not having them, but we're going to. We're going to have prayer meetings. Because I don't believe this church will ever go any farther or higher than what we do on our knees. I believe that. I can't hear you. Yeah. It's fine. Brief. Well, I'm, I'm pretty well through, except for the last thing I'll say to you is, I've doubted my salvation before too many times. Some of y'all don't, and that's a blessing. But I've doubted mine. But when I was facing that embankment, there wasn't a bit of doubt there. I really thought I was going to heaven. I really did. But church, please don't forget this last thing. It's an opportunity for us, all of us, to get back to where we need to be. And I want to thank all of you. I want to thank my brother and his family, especially Unreal, what all they did and, and how they just took me in and just spoiled me really rotten. I am. 
Well, go ahead. Go ahead. I want to finish up after you. One, one, one more thing I want to do. Huh? No, we didn't say you're preaching now, Mr. Monroe. Lost my son. Everybody knows November fifteenth. We played. Okay, Ron, I get on you too. That was brother Ed on you a while ago, and you know it. I'll be real quick. I lost my son. Uh, we played a lot of pool, and uh, didn't go back to the pool hall. I finished out the session, and uh, uh, gentleman there at the pool probably a little too loud. Uh, a, a gentleman there at the pool hall. That was as close as me and my son, and I'm 57. I only know of one other person that I think that, and some of y'all know him, Mark Yoakum lost his son, and I really believe Stephen and Mark was as close as me and Josh. And uh, a, a gentleman, I got to shorten this, it's starting to get long. A gentleman walked in my store Monday with his son. He's worked with his daddy. His name's Randall Baker. And his son's B.J. Baker. They live over here. They he, B.J. came to our church at Circle C Trailer Park probably 15, 20 years ago. He's in his 30s now. But, uh, again, I'm going to be short. But uh, I, uh, I had somebody come by Monday morning and talk to me about some things. And then they came in my store. And his daddy died Monday night after playing pool on the way home. His son was with him. And uh, I'm asking prayer for the Baker family, please. Yeah. Uh, please, if you pray. If you don't pray, pray. Um, the family, uh, BJ's, I'm sure, devastated. Again, it's reversed for me and my son. My son, I believe, is in heaven, and I'll see him again one day. And God's been so good to me. Just a testimony real quick, y'all. God's been good to me. And uh, that hadn't changed. I hadn't questioned God, not trying to be spiritually pious. I know why my God. I know why my son died in my heart. Uh, I believe I know for sure, and that's what. In ten months, talking to people, um, the things people struggle most with is you know wondering why, why God, why God did you take my mama? Why did you take? And uh, I have daily so many people that I, I believe the Lord allows me to help so many I don't even tell my brother all of them I don't tell my wife because it's almost got old school but God's been good please pray for the Baker family um, again um, I just you know please pray for the Baker family I got people I've been dealing with anyway 